<laughs> Yo, welcome to Boozing with the Big Guy. I am the big guy, right back. And I am here tonight, guys. Tonight, we're going to read some positive comments, some loving comments. I'm doing a little bit of the Jack Daniels Honey Jack. True story on, on this right here. My first uh, encounter with this, my good buddy, uh, Stu Bennett, you might know him as, I'm afraid I've got some bad news, Wade Barrett. He, uh, at WrestleMania one year, and I don't remember which fucking one. I was in a few. I think it was in four or five. The, uh, I think six, because we were NXT, we were at one. We went on the stage and, like, waved at the crowd. I was in a really shitty suit with a cowboy hat. Look it up. It's online somewhere. Just a fucking bunch of guys that had no fucking clue about anything back then. But, uh, Wade got drunk on Honey Jack on Big Show's bus. and But he wasn't working. This was, I think he was out injured. I think I was just coming back. I can't remember what what the um, it was the year. What year was this year? Fucking Punk worked Undertaker because I remember we were sitting there. They were in the ring, and uh, this is this is actually a pretty funny story. We're we're starting off hot here. I'm boozing with the big guy. I'm drinking Honey Jack and water tonight, guys. Just so you know, tonight's a tonight's a really fun night. <laughs> I'll never forget. I'm sitting with Wade. We're in the we're in the stands. <laughs> me and Stu, we we would get together, guys. There's so much shit, so much history with me and Stu. I just love like Stu. You when I can make when I can make Wade laugh, like I know I know I'm on my game because he's he's a tough fucker to get. But when he goes, he fucking belly laughs and it. No, it might be one of my favorite things in the world to make Stu Bennett like truly belly laugh because he's a miserable UK prick because of the fucking clouds and the weather and like there's just something about it when they, you just get the, some UK people have really negative personalities and Wade I, he's one of my fucking guys I he's one of my good friends in wrestling but like they have <clears throat> they're not easy to get to laugh and uh, Hunter and Stephanie had their kids ringside. And uh, I we're sitting in the the, the fucking uh, in the stands, and I and there's I think there was a group of people around, and uh, but it was like all guys that we like we all trusted, and uh, no fucking stooges or something that's gonna go fucking say what the fuck we're talking about in the stands because that shit exists, guys. And uh, but anyways, uh, Stu, I said to Sully, Stephanie had they had the kids in the ring. And I can't remember exactly the exact details, but I said, so I go, I wasn't, I don't think I debuted yet. I, I don't know what, I can't remember if I was out with the ankle injury. This was, I think, the Atlanta. I hadn't come back. I was still, they were trying to figure out what was wrong with my, my ankle still. The, none of the doctors knew and they wouldn't listen to me. Take the fucking metal out of my leg, guys. It's not rocket science, which eventually happened and then I was able to come back. Um, but I said, I go, what if, I go, if I just like went, over the guardrail, because we, we can go around the ring. Like, you're, there's nothing, all of the guys are all, always around the ring. But I was, we weren't on the show, so we, the guys were going over their matches and shit. But Hunter and Stephanie had their kids and their daughters in the ring, and they were like, I go, what do you think they would do if I, like, just slid in there right now? It, like, started crawling on my heads, and he's like, goochie, 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 goo. It started playing with the kids and stew. It was just all just a good, because one never would do that. But, like, not cool with the family. I hadn't done shit at that point. Like, you know what I mean? So it was just one of those funny moments. Stu got the picture in his head and just, to this day, it's one of the things engraved in my brain. And uh, where I got Stu to really fucking lose it. Belly laughed for a good five minutes. And I, I couldn't have been any happier. Ah, this honey jack. I'm going to have to make this a little stronger. I don't know if you guys have noticed or not, but I'm getting a, a lot more fucking jacked. I leaked really bad right there. I uh, this is a Doherty's from the UK, uh, kind of one of those like Alex Riley tank tops basketball jersey. Jesus Christ, big guy, holler if you hear me. The uh, I'm 21 days, 22 days in on a plant based diet. Right now, I know there's people probably screaming steroids, and I've lived with it my whole life. I have never felt better. I feel like I've been lied to 
my entire life. And I'm a big, dumb fucking idiot, guys. I just, I happen to have gotten smarter by reading. I read relentlessly. I forget three quarters of what I read, but I remember about a quarter of it. Maybe even less than that. Maybe let's go with like seven and a half percent of what I, of all the shit that I read. And, uh, and I just got way smarter than I was supposed to, but I, I, I've never felt better. And I, not to say that I'm not, I've talked about it on the other things, whether you eat meat, whatever you do, I just was eating so much of it and I've eaten so much of it my entire life and I just said, I'm going to get blood work done. I'm just going to take a chance as to one thing I've never done. And I mean, this is, I dare anyone to fucking argue with any of this. And again, I'm lifting heavy. I respond really well to heavy weights. It was one of the things that killed me not doing it. And I know someone's really, really pissed that I keep checking myself out in the camera, but I am an egotistical piece of shit and I love my fucking big guy body. So I'm going to keep doing it. Let's get to these comments, guys. Put myself over some more. Okay. Tonight's a positive comment. These videos don't tend to do as well, but I don't want to just do whining with the Ryback acknowledging negative comments. Um, this is essentially just a show for me to toot my own horn. And, uh, yeah. I kid, guys. I'm sarcastic. The, the Ryback character in person is sarcastic 99% of the time, but when I am serious for that 1%, it is fucking more intense than anybody that could have 100% intensity. My 1% is better than 99% of the world. I'm that fucking intense. So I gotta relax when I can, because I'm you know, always ready to fucking break. <sighs> okay. You guys are seeing the progression. We're documenting all of this as my mood increases as I get bigger, because I'm happy, because I'm able to lift heavy shit, pick heavy shit up. I... I've loved to do that since I was a kid. It's the one thing. So it fucking killed me for three years to go into the goddamn motherfucking LVAC and fucking go to the little air machines and pump the little air machine up to 30 fucking pounds of pressure sitting there just fucking going through the motions because I knew if doing that was better than not doing anything. But fucking hell. It's amazing. I didn't, I kept, that's why I've done all this and kept myself busy with everything. I'm losing my fucking mind over here. Fucking hell. Also, guys, before I get to these comments, very important thing. If uh, you could subscribe to this channel and share it, uh, we need to get this motherfucker to a million as quick as possible. Talk to the attorney today, and uh, we're going to delay the Ryback trademark uh, for, it'll be seven months from right now, a little over seven and a half months that it'll be delayed. And then uh, I got to fight it, and it's probably going to cost well over, well over 100000 from what I was told. And uh, it's going to, it probably will get, it depends on the, how their, their take on it is. They're, they're not going to win. They've lost on every step of the way. But uh, it, it just really, really bothers me that they're making me do this. But it's not going to stop me from using the Ryback name. It's just more that I don't want that fucking piece of shit to have anything of mine that I created. And I know there's some of you little fucking marks out there that put him on a pedestal and whatnot. <laughs> and uh, you love WWE. It provides the entertainment. There's some of you that will defend them till the day you die. And like, I get it. Cool. Like, cool. But I ain't letting them get away with shit, so. All right. Because the stuff they've done to me and the shit they've tried to do and they're still doing and the stuff they've put out, you guys don't expect anyone to understand. But the fucking anger that is created inside me, the you guys, it's all for the best. Because that anger, they've done this to me before, and that anger fucking created Ryback to fucking go out there with a chip on his shoulder with an anger. That was what came out on TV was real life shit, and it'll happen all over again on a much better level, and it's not going to be to make them the fucking money. It'll be wherever the fuck I go. All right, let's get into putting myself over a little bit here. Tryheart Ninja says, uh, Ryback, you're just so amazing, and... I know I should comment about the video, but I just want to thank you for the positivity you spread and everything. I deal with a lot of mental health issues, one of them being PTSD. And seeing you do what you do is amazing. It's just amazing. Thank you so much. Try Heart Ninja, thank you very much. And I sympathize, man. And uh, I can only speak from my own experience. And, and I, you know, I've, I've talked about depression before. And we all get it. And we all get sad. And there's different levels to this shit. And... You know, there, there's, there's people, we all, nobody goes through life without bad shit happening. It's never happened once, right? Just think about it. Like it, it 
the longer you live, the, the more the likelihood you're going to have to experience um, what we perceive to be bad things. So uh, I'm glad I could provide you with some entertainment. And uh, I'm a stubborn motherfucker and I, I won't stop. And uh, I just needed to get myself to a certain level health wise to be able to push. And I'm, I'm glad I'm able to inspire you and hearing getting comments like this inspires me. That's the stuff that I love is getting the good comments that I help people because you guys help me too. And it's it, a it, it give, 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 take, give, give. Am I getting drunk? I might be getting drunk. Thank you is what I was trying to say. Moving on. Mickey D's bro. Yo, right back. You my inspiration and a big role model to me. Thanks for everything you do. Feed me more. Mickey D's, thank you very much. I always, uh, I love comments like that. It always makes me smile. Yo, right back. You're my inspiration. Sorry, I was reading that for me. That was really awkward. I was just, that was, this Honey Jack's pretty strong. Maybe it's because of the two shaker bottles I had of it prior. I'm not going to lie, guys. A good night of, you can't do this stuff all the time. But just working morning to night, and like I told you guys, these videos, it just allows me to mentally unwind. This is why it's just me. Just it's like, this is me. Just I let loose on these fucking things because it's, I need to. <clears throat> Omaha Mercenary. Weird name. Love you a lot, big guy. Can't say again how much you help people out. Thank you very much. A lot of thank yous on these because I don't, it's, you never know how to how to react to some of this stuff other than thank you because it, it's um, it's pretty cool. Uh, Christine W says, "Awesome job! Congratulations! You are an amazing person who is a role model for so many people. Uh, you have a big heart, and I love your channel so much. Thank you for your videos that you do for all of us. Thank you, Christine. And uh, YouTube has been an amazing platform for me." To, to be able to uh, interact with you guys. And just so everyone knows, I, it is me. I like all the comments, guys. I go through and we use the YouTube studio. I'm able to pull up. So like, no matter what I'm doing in the day, and I have all this social media, I'm a big Gary Vaynerchuk fan. I love Gary. And Gary has helped me so much. And um, I think a lot of wrestlers or people that are famous sometimes, they don't want to... They don't want to act like, they don't want to, because you, you always hear like the, with the wrestling, you don't want to give away the mystique, but we live in a different time now and we live in a time of engagement and the work takes care of itself. And when you go out there and you work and you do, that's a whole entirely different thing. And there's nothing wrong with communicating with your fan base and showing love. And I, no matter what I'm doing, if I'm training and like I stop and I fucking pull it up real quick and I go through it and I read everything. And I'm able to like it really quick and I just stay on top of it every day. And I try to do it under the different social media platforms. And a lot of it's, it's now, is it, that's why I had to get good at processing the negative stuff. And I had so much experience because Gary and these guys and Gary is speaking from experience of he deals, Gary deals with more hate than anybody. And people don't understand that. And I've spoken with his team and they tell me about it. And I go, fuck, that sounds like exactly what I go through on things. And Gary's just. He's killing it on social media, but the more you do, the more hate you get. So I had to learn how, because I don't want to like quit. I'm not going to be like, oh, I'm giving up this stuff. I needed to learn how to deal with it. And I did, and it doesn't bother me anymore on that. But so I'm able to go through and read the comments and like, and it's me doing it, guys. I've seen people saying like, oh, you got robots. No, it's fucking me. I'm telling it's fucking me. Suck it. Okay. To those saying robots. I don't even know there's... Are there fucking YouTube robots? I'd be afraid to lose my channel. All right, moving on. Uh, Master Owns You. Very aggressive name. I just want to say, big guy, I manage a pizza hut. That's well, you're a manager. of Okay. Like, and, both you, you're, uh, and both your pizza and knots were about a day old to a day and a half old. You can tell by the color of the pizza. That's fucked up. That was like, th how long ago was that? Like three or four weeks ago? 
Is that why I was shitting so much? Oh, wait, maybe that's because I'm an asshole and eat so many fucking hot foods. Come by my pizza hut if you're ever in Colorado. I will make you the best damn pizza you ever had for free. I'm going to remember that. Maybe tell me the city in Colorado so that I could fucking narrow it down a little bit, buddy. Colorado's, I mean, fairly large fucking state, huh? Not expecting me to take you up on that? Fucking follow up with the city. Come on. Stupid! I'm kidding. This is positive. Thank you very much. Send me the fucking city. Uh, Rick Henderson. Let me tell you something about dogs. They are like kids. Probably better. I agree. They don't talk back. I know there's somebody. Even, you don't have kids. Shut the fuck up, Karen and Susie. I don't give a fuck what you think. I love my dogs like my fucking kids. But I don't have kids. You know what I mean. They don't talk back. A great point. And they give unconditional love to you. Again, fucking facts. A lot of kids hate their parents. I love how you love your dogs. They're the, the greatest thing. I've loved dogs since I was a kid. I have two Corkies, which are Yorkie Corgi mix, and I would go through the gates of hell for them. Love your channel, big guy. Thank you, Rick. This drink's for you, my friend. I've, uh, I sometimes feel a little trapped with everything going on with the dogs, and I've talked about it a lot on the podcast, Conversation with the Big Guy Ryback. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe, guys. Listen for five or ten minutes just to give us a listen, and uh, the channel is growing really, really fast. And But... Um, I'm not trying to plug everything all the time here. Sorry. I just want the podcast. I put a lot into that podcast for three years. The, um, I love Sophie and Lil Guy and I've loved dogs since I was a kid. And I'll, I'll tell you guys some more stuff. Why I'm really, really attached to dogs. Uh, is we, we develop more of a relationship here on Ryback TV. The, um, but they're, they're just, it's like Sophie. They told me that the place with the, with, um, her back condition. She's had seven ruptured discs and uh, she's doing really good now. And I have to watch her day and night. I have to carry her up and down the stairs. I have to put her on the bed, take her off the bed. I have to take her outside on a leash six, seven times a day. My mother who lives in the apartment attached to my house uh, takes care of her in the mornings for me so I can have a little bit of a break. I have to leave them in crates when I leave and uh, they can't be in there for too long. So it makes it really difficult for me to do things. And um, a lot the, the vet said that Pretty much everyone puts their dog to sleep after the second one. And I just chose with True Panion Pet Insurance. And going through my back injuries, I was very um, understanding to the situation. And I didn't want to... Uh, she's the most loving dog I've ever had. So I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Like, she's been here with me for my back injuries. I'm going to be there for her. And that was my thought process in the fucking thing. And... I've had to put dogs down in the past, and she was too young, in my opinion, to put her down. And uh, she's my fucking baby. All right, we don't get, want to get too fucking emotional over here. I'm fucking kill the gimmick! God damn it. Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> All right. Uh, Kirsten Rodriguez says, I'll put a little more on you, Jack, in this. Oh, jeez, should I enter the Mr. Olympia? Um, I needed to hear that hurt people hurt people. It's true. I adore you. Shh, Kirsten, I'm pouring a little more. Oh, that was a lot. Fuck. I don't have a lot of water. That's going to be like drinking a straight fucking Jack. I might fucking black out on this show. Nothing will be doing those four locos. That's like 24 shots. I did it in under three hours. How I was not worse off. I And I woke up early. And came downstairs and recorded, ordered 15 Del Taco Tacos. 20, actually, and ate 15 of the 20. I don't know why I ordered 20. I, it was, I, I was drunk. I was drunk all day. I was drunk doing that. If you want to see me fucking fucked up, watch that Del Tacos video, guys. I look like shit. That was when I first started eating vegetarian or plant-based. I mean, you could tell now I'm much younger in the three weeks of doing it. I, I mean, I look like I'm probably 27 and a half. Okay. Stop it. God. Nothing's worth worse. Nothing's worth worth a little fucking a little lisp of worth. Moving on. 
Kristen, Kristen Rodriguez says, I needed to hear that hurt people hurt people. It's true. I adore you. Such a great mind and such great positivity. Big guy who understands how life should work with people always sending out a good message. Fucking yes, please. Thank you very much, Kirsten. And I, that is, it's, I've learned that and through Gary and through me that um, uh, people that are doing good don't try to go hurt other people. Like I told, I've talked about this before. We all see things we don't like. That's okay. We're all going to see things that we don't connect with or don't understand or don't like. And then we're going to look and we're going to think like, oh, they're, they're fake or they're this or they're that. And it's like, it's, I get it. I get it. But it's when you stop and actually try to comment and hurt other people, that's when you're not in a, like, you just, people that are in a good place, you just don't have time for that shit. And you, you got to teach yourself that. And that's what, like, I, I feel like social media is so new and Gary's so big. Gary Vaynerchuk is so big on people being positive on here. And I'm going to be on fucking stage with Gary. And I can't wait. I, I love Gary because he's putting out a good message. He's teaching kids because there's so many people not teaching kids and we're way too overpopulated and shit is fucking scary that it needs as many of us putting out the good message because there's a bunch of dumb fucks that had kids for fucking for far too many years and we are living in idiocracy. But it's not humans by nature want to do good and you just have to fucking put that out there. And like, it's like I, I choose to do good. Don't get me wrong. Like I get very angry and I have a lot of, I have a lot of anger and negativity in me at times that I could let out if I want to. And I do my best. I'm like the fucking meditated Hulk trying to fucking keep everything calm and that there's always a better way. Just, you don't need to spread hate though. There's no need for it. And it's only hurt people that do it. And that's the bottom line. There's no, it's a fact. It, it's fucking, it, it's, it's a fact stronger than fucking gravity in my opinion. All right. Why did I just move my arm like I had a fucking shirt on? I was adjusting my sleeve. God, what the fuck is wrong with me? I, where do I start? All right. Uh, okay, I can't say this name. Oh, I think it says, it's supposed to say lethal dosage 50, but it's a three instead of an E. Got it. From the, oh, that's strong as shit. Oh, fuck. From the 630 point Ryback, you hit the nail on the head. I can remember, you, fuck, I'm getting drunk. I can remember years ago, a lot of these wrestling websites gave you so much shit for being a Goldberg clone and being quote unquote stale. Uh, hell, you've won me over as a fan just from the weekly videos. If people would look at people outside of entertainment instead of thinking wrestling characters, or an imitation of real life, they'd learn a lot more. Thank you very much. And in all fairness, a lot of this stuff, I, got, I, I haven't changed. This is the best part. Like, I did a lot of this stuff with Ryback Axel on, like, WWE.com stuff. And they just wouldn't, they wouldn't put it on TV because they didn't want people to see. But they kept us busy all the time. And I was on every pay-per-view. and But a lot of fans, like, they don't watch everything all the time and whatnot. So, and I didn't put as much out on social media at the time because I was... I didn't understand social media and understand that I, and that's one, one thing now I think so many talents should be on there. Like Matt Hardy is a genius doing what he's doing with it right now because you can counter what they're trying to do on their programming. And what you can actually do is build a better, more loyal audience doing stuff like YouTube, which every WWE talent should do YouTube. And that's just my opinion. And uh, because you can counter a lot of things going on. And moving on. DTWTM, love your channel, man. It's refreshing seeing somebody famous so real and relatable. Great food review. I'm going to have to try um, these for sure now. Got me hungry. I wish I, you know, I'm doing this the plant-based stuff. I'm not doing nearly as much, but I actually, guys, we're going to be doing some chocolate crickets coming up here. I think the chocolate crickets might actually be out before this video, so check that out. And uh, we've actually just ordered uh, Bugs Kebab. A whole kebab of like cockroaches and worms and fucking nasty bugs. And I'm going to eventually do that on this channel. And it's, I joked about it before, but you know what? It, I want you guys to understand the, the rarity of Ryback because it fucking bothers me. And without drugs and, and again, TRT within normal ranges of everything I've done in compared to people of the past that were on steroids and things, it's, 
and I've seen people make comments of once in a lifetime fucking athlete and things. It, it's I'm very, very confident in my abilities and in my work ethic. And I want to show you guys my mentality and why with everything with that fucking company and the shit that they did, why I'm so fucking internally angry on things. And I want you to see this body is not a result of drugs. or It's a result of fucking hard work and not steroids in the mind. And it's an entirely different thing to people that do do that shit. So I'm just, I'm, I'm doing crazy shit. I want you to see that it's all in the mind and I've overcome so many fucked up things in my life. And I just want you, when you put your mind in the right place, you can do anything. So that's what my, my line of thinking is on this. Uh, last one, last one. Oh, this is a long video. Yo, Ryback, back again. I love the Brad went once. Uh, yo, Ryback, back again. I love the videos you put out. I want to say thank you for all your motivational speaking. Since watching your videos, man, I have had more confidence to speak out about my stuff. And I have to say you are the first celebrity normal person I have felt at ease, at ease with to share myself with you and your viewers to read. Fuck yeah. Thank you for being you and always feed us more. Yours truly, Brad Wants. And I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Thank you very much, Brad. And man, that's the thing. It comes with... When you do the work and you have the confidence, you can speak up and it, you can just, you be real. And it's not, you pe it's not being a piece of shit. You treat people nice, you do nice things, but you don't put up with the bullshit because there's too many bad people in this world. And I, that's when I fucking will smash that fucking shit every fucking time. I don't like bad people. I do not like bad people. I fucking loathe and despise bad people. And I'm not the kind of guy that will fucking... You don't, bad people with brains, it's like a, a, a guy that fucking walks up and shoots your fucking parent right in the head in front of you. You don't have sympathy to that. You don't have fucking sympathy to that because they will turn and they will shoot you in the head and you have to end those motherfuckers as quickly as possible. And that is where I stand as far as being a good human being is you treat people kindly. But when you have people that act out of line and do things that are distinctly fucking bad, you have to stop it. And you don't put up with it. And you speak your fucking mind and you have no fear. Fucking kill me. Fuck it. I'm going to fucking speak up for what I believe in. And that's motherfucking Ryback for you. All the way to the day I fucking die. All the way. There's no other way. We could all be good and there's, you could fucking have a business, you can make money and you do good. There's no reason. That's all you got to do. You can just fucking do good and help people. And we got so many shady motherfuckers on this planet. And I don't know where the fuck it went wrong, but it fucking bothers me. And I ain't gonna fucking live that way. I know that much. All right. <sighs> well, guys, that was intense. Very intense edition of Boozing with the Big Guy right back. Sophie's sitting right here watching me. I love her. You my babes. Daddy, why are you getting all angry? Anyways, guys, I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, we have a lot of work to still do, and uh, I'm enjoying documenting all of this. You've just watched another edition of Boozing with the Big Guy. Get hungry, stay hungry. Feed me more! Thank you guys very much for watching Ryback TV. If you could smash that subscribe, hit that like button, share this channel, and for Feed Me More Nutrition on feedmemore.com, save 10% with Podcast 10, click here for my podcast conversation with the big guy Ryback, available on all podcast platforms. Click here. And for more videos of yours truly on Ryback TV, click here. Feed me more.